Moderation is great. Comfort is also something that should be enjoyed in moderation. Discomfort is the only time you grow. This is the Texploder Podcast, conversations with tech professionals about being human in a binary world. Episode 17, Michael Fisher, aka Mr. Mobile. Texploder is made possible by the financial support of our patrons like Peter Giftos. If you like what you hear, head on over to patreon.com slash Jason Howell to support the show directly. And thank you for making independent podcasting possible. Hello, and welcome to the Texploder podcast. I'm your host, Jason Howell. And let's go back in time with just a little bit here. Earlier this month, I was invited to Google's space age looking Mountain View campus to attend the product unveiling of the Pixel 9 family of smartphones. It was a lot of fun. Now, while I was there, I crossed paths with a lot of friends in the technology space, but in particular, a great friend of mine in the world of tech, someone who has a very high profile presence on YouTube. You might even follow him. I'm sure you do. Michael Fisher, aka Mr. Mobile, has been doing the YouTube thing since 20. 2016 has more than 1.2 million subscribers following his, I feel, impeccably produced and edited product reviews. Prior to YouTube, Michael actually worked as a tech journalist for Pocket Now. And before even that, he spent his time steeped in the professional acting space. Now, if you watch his reviews, you'll pick up on his acting roots immediately. He has a wonderful storytelling gift. It really does set his videos apart from the rest. Now, I sat down with Michael outside of his hotel in the South Bay after the full day's events with Google. So we were a little ragged. We shared a beer and this wonderful conversation. Here it is, my chat with Mr. Mobile. How's it going, Michael Fisher? Oh, man, I'm tense and unsure about everything. Yeah, this, this I hear moment, you. This moment, I, I'm happy. Good. To be talking with you. I spend a lot of my life tense and unsure. At least yeah. at least the last like half year has been many moments of tense and unsure. You and I have had different but the same year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, you've had a you're you're building momentum though. We well, like that. I mean, I think so. Yeah. I mean, the you the YouTube channel is feels like there's some momentum there. Yeah. The podcasts you know, it's really hard. Like, you you know the you know the YouTube thing. Yeah. And we've actually talked about this. You know the YouTube thing very well, in fact. And people who know you probably... Pretty well, yeah. ...very likely know you because of your YouTube presence. But, you know, the, YouTube's a, a strange world in that you, you mix too many different efforts in the same channel... And it can kind of it can kind of derail the progress of the channel, it's you like know. Putting too many ingredients in the same dish. Yeah, yeah, like I've got a couple of podcasts going there. I've got regular reviews content and different and different stuff like that. Right. And they get different audiences depending on what they are. And yeah. the podcast content might be good for what it is, but it might not match the numbers that the other type of content gets. And I don't know right. what that means for the whole whole bags yeah, and then at some point you're gonna like do i silo these do i make them different channels and, yeah you know, uh, it's not a bad idea but yeah. you know well i know i feel like that's a that's a later problem maybe Absolutely. i don't know maybe it is a now problem that's yeah. the thing i don't know well and see what it see what you actually like doing more too because when i started i was like i'm gonna do a lot i'm gonna cover everything and yes. then it turned out like these kickstarter things that i was covering that were weird and fun 80% of the time wouldn't make it to market. And I'm like, well, look, I just can't do these anymore. Yeah. It's like a thought experiment, not a product review. So totally. To totally. Like, it feels like a product review because you actually have a product. You have it, right. And we're technology fans, so it's fun to have something in your hand and yes. tangible. But if it never actually amounts to something more than like a prototype that a small select yeah. people – you know, group of people, including you, because you were willing to cover it, right. get, then it doesn't matter. You as may much, as well have right. a concept car channel. And yeah. that's, you know, that's fine. That's just not the channel I set out to make. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, um, so the thing I love about this show, and I think I say it at the top of, it, of every show, is kind of the, the fact that we all have very different stories, but we have a shared passion. Mm -hmm. Technology, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I imagine, I mean, you live and breathe it on an outward facing perspective. I have to imagine that started somewhere when you were younger. Like, you, like what was it like yeah. being 
a young kid? What is there like a moment in time when you were younger where you were like, that's when the light switch turned on for me in technology? Yeah, I think so. And I think what's what's funny is I always go back to like the Star Trek example because that's the most concrete I knew, one. I knew, and we were of course. Go that's there. yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, you knew we were going to get there eventually. <laughs> but what's funny is as I think about it now, there there's some things that predate that, and for all the. Um, for all the fears and all the hand wringing about in the eighties, when I grew up about how television was going to rot your brain and all this kind of stuff, like there was actually some really inspirational power to it. There was, um, there were shows like inspector gadget, which oh, are yeah. like, you know, cartoons for kids. And Heck I was, yeah. I was like six and Penny, his niece uh, had like this computer book and a computer watch. And I feel like those really planted those early seeds of like, well, wow, that's cool. Like they're out getting stuff done in the world with the aid of this fantastical, cool technology. Yeah. And then when I did get older and Star Trek became a big pronounced thing, you know, I was watching these uh, these starship crews whom I idolized uh, have communications over the course of, of, of hundreds of, of miles with these handheld devices, which in the early 90s was very fanciful. Mm -hmm. And it also happened to be a time when we had a home phone that I wasn't allowed to use as much as I would have liked to call my friends. Yeah. So this like, th there was, there was an almost mythical power to this theoretical idea that I could have a device that would let me talk to all my friends. Mm -hmm. And I never dreamed at that point in the early to mid nineties that it would ever become a consumer product that I could afford. Mm -hmm. I grew up like lower middle class, right? Mm -hmm. And by the end of the nineties, these things were, mm -hmm. Walk into Radio Shack, $129, mm -hmm. pay $40 a month. And I will always remember standing there on the sidewalk calling my best friend on my first mobile phone call of my own with my own device and be like, asking a question that would make no sense on any other device. Guess where I am? You know? Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> every time I called him before, it was like, well, I'm calling from home, obviously. Right? Yeah, of course. But I was out and about. I mean, untethered. you could have you been in like a phone booth, which is a thing that existed the back then, booth, I suppose. Absolutely. Sure, but, sure, sure, sure. But most of the time, right? But most I'm of the time, absolutely not. Like, yeah. where, what do you mean, where are you calling from? So, so I think that really just like, I never recovered from that in much the same way that like trauma hits you and you never get over something. Mm -hmm. It's like it, in a very positive way, I never recovered from that moment of like, like, like a like heroin grade freedom of communication. <laughs> and, you mean uh, I'm not tied to the wire, the spirally wire that comes out of the wall? Exactly. You I remember the time anywhere when when phones you know were attached to the wall, and the only way you could go to the other room with that phone was to get a really freaking long Absolutely. spirally cord. <laughs> yes, that was mobility. Uh, yeah, part, that yeah. was mobility. Thirty foot spiral. Uh, what do you call RS two thirty two cable? We we had one of those in our in our kitchen slash living room area, and I mean it was so long and and spiral that it like crumpled up on the floor below it. Yeah. That was just so that we could go to all the, you know, the rooms <laughs> yeah. that were close by. And that was normal. Right. And that was, you know, luxury. You had to do the limbo anytime you want to walk by someone right. who's the, using the phone. The cord know? is snaking through all the rooms of the house. And like, <laughs> Sister on the phone again. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There was obviously a pain point to solve there. That's something that cell phones have solved. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also I think like, but building on that, like it, we, it was a moment. It was a revolution. It was yeah. kind of like the internet. Um, you know, these things came down in price so quickly that you, you, not only did you get a phone, but like all your friends had a phone within five years or maybe mm. even less time. And being part of that, that like cresting wave of change was intoxicating in the same way that, that being online when everyone was getting AOL. Yeah. Was. And I think that that also continues to like pollute my, my brain in a way like now where I'm novelty obsessed and I'm like, well, we're here. We are in Mountain View mm -hmm. chasing down the next thing. Mm -hmm. And what is next on my agenda? The only important thing work wise is like, when is the next thing coming out that I'm going to see? Right. Like, new, it's constant. new, 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 constant it's hamster constant. wheel. Yeah. Which is exciting, but also like toxic, I think. I mean, it can a be way. a little exhausting for sure. Yeah. Well, so what do you so mean? I, I look, I look very young and, and not tired at all. <laughs> you look wonderful. No, yes. It, it, it does not look like you are exhausted at all. Bleeding Dude. out my eyeballs <laughs> is what it looks like. Thank you. So, okay. So touching on that a little bit then, like I, I do remember being young and having, you know, pieces of technology that I suddenly become aware of. In fact, I, I specifically remember, um, a catalog and seeing this like flight 
sim style joystick that I could get for my Commodore 64. Because yes. I think I'm a, I'm a little older than you. I had a Commodore com- 64. Oh, did you? I did. Yeah. Oh well, bravo. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like my le- that's like my cornerstone technology from from childhood. Absolutely. And seeing that joystick. And oh my God, I wanted that joystick so bad and I had to save up my money and I finally got, you know, my parents let me use, use that money on this like mail order thing to get the joystick and just the design, like coming home every day from school and checking, like it was so exciting. Right. That feeling, is there technology nowadays that gives you that feeling? Good question. And, and possibly working in, in this field as a career might permanently alter that to a certain degree but i mean and or or lessen it let's say it does first of all because it always used to make me happy or um, not happy it always used to entertain me back when people used to because commenters criticize you for everything right yeah and back when commenters would choose the angle of like you're just saying nice things about them because they send you free phones and i would literally laugh at the computer i'd be like do you know that when a box shows up in my house that is just it may as well just be a a box labeled like work (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's like, so true. You know, it's like it's not that yes. I don't look forward to it. Like, yeah, sure. Right. But it's like no, this is the job, and this is what yeah. we do. Absolutely, it is. So anyway, um, <laughs> so true. <laughs> I feel that so hard. You know, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. You just want a free phone. It's like, no, I don't want any more phones. Right. I was telling you right before we went on air. I want to go be a tour bus driver at Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> I'm done. But no, I think um, oddly, I think the things that I look forward to trying and using now are the. Are, are things that decouple me from my phone. So I adore my phone. I adore my foldable phones. You know, I still yeah. geek out about phones predominantly. That's my key passion. But And differentiation within phones. It seems like that's yes. become a real pillar for critical. For it, yeah, if it doesn't have a hinge, a joke, like I don't care about it, but it's not really <laughs> a joke. Like, it's, it has to be a foldable. But, um, you know, that's a different thing. But I think you've got companies out here now like Teenage Engineering is a good example. I was just fiddling with uh, one of their portable audio recorders, and uh, it's way too much audio gear for me. I don't need it. In fact, it made this job harder covering Mm -hmm. the releases we were just doing now because it's not the right tool for the job I need. But it's such a beautiful piece of hardware. It is. And it's, it's so specialized. And I think I miss the era before the convergence device, before the phone took over for everything. Mm -hmm. I miss that we had so many more gadgets to enjoy and to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you ever, have you ever seen that Radio Shack, that old Radio Shack ad? I think that's what it was for, where um, it's like a meme now. There's a guy, very late eighties, definitely a mullet. And he's like surrounded by all these single use gadgets. He's got like a boom box on his shoulder. He's got like a camcorder. He's wearing a Walkman and he's got like a flashlight, whatever. And the meme is like, all this stuff from the 80s is now one device. Yeah, on yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, it, we've, so we've seen this like as as companies have been able to be formed now that that make single like single use devices mm-hmm. and, and can find a little niche market enough to like make a business out of. Mm-hmm. We've seen more and more of those. And I think that's really fun. So those are the ones I look forward to receiving in the mail now. Yeah. You know, whether it's a dumb phone or a, or a TP7 from Teenage Engineering or, you know, I don't know, like a, like dumb little LED flashlights, like single use things. Yeah, single use, but does that very unique thing extremely well, well because right. that was their entire focus. Yes. Instead of where we are with cell phones, and, and granted, this is what a lot of people actually love about cell phones is what you're talking about. The fact that it's a Swiss Army knife of all these yeah. things and every year, you know, a new release like we're, we're out at you know, Mountain View at the time of this recording for yeah. the Made by Google event, you know, every Made by Google event is about adding more features about now your phone can also do this on right. top of the thousands upon thousands of things that we've announced in years past that it could do before. Yes. That's a that's a great selling, like that's a, a great thing for a technology lover to hear because it's like, oh man, this thing can really do everything. Yeah. But I would agree. There's something special about that little thing that does one thing very well Right. Yeah. 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 Purpose built thing. Yeah. Purpose built thing. Yeah. And I think there's even a little like a um, like a content sector that's that's uh, taken great advantage of that, and that's the everyday carry like mm. community. You know, it's like there are some things your phone can't be, and that that's like a knife. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and it's like okay, well then, what does that mean for like what I carry every day, and what does that mean to me that I? Well, carry I mean, a phone things? could be a knife it if you get be. the right case. Yeah. Right. Well, true enough. Yeah. I, I bet you someone has made that, and if Someone's not, that. That Definitely apparently that. is what you need to do after clicks. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you remember that that old Sprint commercial with the crime deterrent? No, 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 no. It's just like, uh, you know, guys are just like, uh, yeah, it's my new Sprint phone. It's got push to talk. It's got an FM radio. Crime deterrent. <laughs> and the other guy, they're like in a locker room. The other guy's like, crime deterrent? It's like, try and uh, take my phone. And the guy reaches for his phone and he just picks it up and hits him in the head with it. <laughs> Knocks him over. <laughs> I'm filing a grievance, Bill. <laughs> crime deterrent. I don't know. Late, mid, late 80, or 90s, I'm guessing. It was yes. mi- early aughts. Oh, was it? Okay. Oh, well, actually, I guess in the, the realm of cell phones. Because the 90s era cell phones, I mean, when I, when I think of you and your coverage of the smartphone industry, yeah. I also think of you, whether this is true or not, being sort of encyclopedic about the history of cell phones, or, or at least the kind of nerdery of yeah. cell phones that came before it. Definitely. And there was the time when cell phones were literally a brick, like the terminology, like it's a brick in the hand. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it came from the fact that these things were the size of a brick. It weighed before. eight pounds. Yeah. yeah. Or the you can suitcase put it in your pocket. Phone. Yeah. I mean, put it in so like a, a big cargo I, pocket and, you know, <laughs> take your pants down along with it. Right. Yeah. And, you know, that period, I'm not all that nostalgic for. I mean, you yeah. remember it too, right? But it's like they were inconvenient and they I, didn't last long. I time. remember that that time period existed and that there were, but, but I didn't have any personal connection. Like, I, right. You know, Yes, I was alive when there were those chunky phones in the cars. Like that was where they first began to yes. appear. And I knew that Quote they existed, court. but I never had that experience. No. You know, I certainly didn't come from that era. It didn't and it, it didn't get personal for me until they became so small that I think, you know, they were. They were Star Trek communicators or they were Dick Tracy watchers or they were mm-hmm. whatever you came up with that seemed fantastical that then materialized, that mm-hmm. then manifested. Mm-hmm. And um, when the Internet came to him, I mean, that, that was also another just like hit of this this drug, too. So I remember being addicted, as we all were, to AOL Instant Messenger. Oh, and yeah. you could do that on wireless web and like using T9 predictive text to click out a, a simple aim message took like a minute. Mm-hmm. Then you would send it and then it would go over this packet switch data and it would take forever. And the person on the other end would be four sentences deep into whatever they were talking about when the time you could say, OK, but it was still <laughs> you were using the Internet on this little yeah. monochrome green backlit screen. And that what a you know, what a what a what a new experience. What a yeah. what a what a different flavor of freedom. It, it only seems limiting now because yeah. we have the the benefit of time and. Right all the development that has come since it. Yeah. But at the time, all of what seems now to be inconveniences or imperfections in technology at the time were a really, really big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And they, the biggest of them was probably like the, the whole act of going online. I was doing a video on the AOL pocket communicator or mobile communicator, whatever it was called. It was a rebranded Blackberry Mm -hmm. that AOL sold as an instant message and email machine. And I talked about this and, and, and it occurred to me that I don't know, I never consciously clocked right around the mid aughts when it happened, when we all became always online, mm-hmm. um, you used to have to start a session. You would go home and you would have to sit in a particular room in front of a particular box and decide yep. you were going to go online yeah. and then you would have to go offline. You'd connect and then you disconnect. And then disconnect. <laughs> and, and at some point, you know, uh, over the course of many years, but, but, but there was a very definite shift to where you're suddenly, oh, you're always reachable and you're yeah. always online. And I think that felt great in, in the moment unconsciously. And now I think more and more, I think it would be very nice to be able to be offline until I need to be online. Yeah, it's almost like we were, we were ramping up this mountain of, of discovery of what this could be in the, in the world of technology. Suddenly this field had opened up in front of us that, Oh my goodness, all these things are possible. The, the restriction is that, you know, we, it's not fast enough or the restriction is, you know, we have to do it in these segmented times. What if we could do it all the time, right? That's an obvious next step. And, and only once you get there and, you know, do you realize maybe on the other side, and I don't think everybody is is there, but I know exactly where where you're coming from is that, okay, maybe, maybe there's a happy medium (laughs) Or maybe it doesn't have to be all the time or, or what, right. whatever, you know, right. what, what seemed like total progress and was progress from a technological standpoint for sure. might not necessarily always be the best thing for me or for us. Yeah. I mean, it, it's such a simple truth. Like, it's almost stupid to be talking about it like it's some revelation. But like, it is something that I'm consciously, constantly, consciously, like becoming cognizant of is like, man, 
moderation is great. And I have built a life in the past, over the past decade that I've recently discovered has been entirely based on preserving comfort. Mm. Comfort is also something that should be enjoyed in moderation. Oh, 100%. Discomfort is the only time you grow. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, prioritizing comfort above everything is like, it seemed like a great idea. And then you've, you become, um, I don't know, um, what do you atrophy? Yeah. You know? No, I, yeah, I, I 100% agree. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's good. So, I mean, so the change that, that, that you've been going through over the past year, half year, and, the, and, and, <laughs> and, very, and, very and, uncomfortable and I, I was, yeah, it was all the same, <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta take the positive from it. Right. Yeah. You gotta say like, Hey, no, you know, uh, like the old country song used to say, I'm, I'm leaving here a better man. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 for sure. It's good. It's the only way you change. Discomfort. Yeah, yeah I would absolutely agree with that. Um, when you're talking about kind of the arc of, of the development of, of these phones that you've been following and yeah. all that kind of stuff, is there, is there an old device, like let's, let's say pre-smartphone, that like really just kind of comes to mind as like, man, that was, you know, do you have a, a certain nostalgic kind of cushion for something? You know, <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word, but I've, it's kind of a weird way to put it. No, but, I, just, I mean, no, just nostalgia is soft and comfortable. Yes, like a it cushion. is. Yes. It is. There's something really nice about it. <laughs> I've got nothing but nostalgia for so many, for so many phone models. But the one that, that really leaps out, I think it's, it's no... It's no coincidence that I identify it with a with a period of my life that I really enjoyed. Yeah, like early college years, like two thousand three, yeah. was the first camera phone I ever got. Uh huh. Because that was the first time I also remember being absolutely convinced that the manufacturers who were trying to cram a camera into a phone and who, to give them credit, in Japan they'd already been doing for two or three years, mm-hmm. um, were correct. And every like the press, I don't know if you remember, the media coverage at the time of these devices was skeptical with a capital S. Mm, like, I don't remember. I don't recall that, actually. And you're talking about cell phones, not smartphones. Right. And these cameras. So so we're talking early 2000s. 2002, 2003. Like, the first digital camera that I ever had any sort of personal involvement with was a Sony Mavica. Oh, yeah, um, with a floppy disk? The, with the big floppy disk. <laughs> yeah. This was 99, and I think it was like VGA quality or something. You know what I mean? I believe it so was. So yep. digital cameras back then did not produce amazing pictures. No, and they so were I struggling. Imagine, you know, the cell phones that I remember having, I think I had like the chocolate at one point or yep. whatever. You know, they took pictures, yes, but, you know, not that great of pictures. I think the chocolate might have even been like a one megapixel camera. Which Yeah, was, no, oh, the oh chocolate was a little bit later yeah. for sure. Well, yeah. these, yeah, these first ones were, I mean, 0.3 megapixels, right? Oh so 640 That's by amazing. 480, whatever it was. Yeah. And you know, you know it was crap and I got it, but it was like, it made all the sense in the world to me that you would want to take a photo and then immediately send it or take a photo and use it on your phone as yeah. like caller ID. And most importantly, be able to take a photo when you don't, you don't want to be carrying a camera around. Yeah. Again, the early kind of convergence device. But the thing that I personally really liked about it was that I was like, no, all you guys are wrong. The skeptics are incorrect about this. These are going to become a thing. And I can't wait until really, I mean, some, so, such a douche i'm like I, I can't wait to be proven right and i think it took um you know less oh, than I will be proven right. <laughs> yes <laughs> you will rue the day you challenged me <laughs> and i think i really don't think it took until even 2008 2009 where we started to see cameras on phones where like you know the resolutions were up to three five megapixels and you'd had things like autofocus and stuff and sure enough you know they weren't gonna win any photography contests yeah. but you could preserve memories yeah totally with a degree that like you was fine for most people mm-hmm. and then you could do things with those memories like like share them and i mean it was like perfect yeah right and then i think at the time i was still so bullish it was like good phone come for more things i remember when the android with the, the motorola launched the droid mm-hmm. and it launched with android 2.0 and it came with free google maps turn by turn directions mm. i remember standing there in the bar looking at this deal. thing dude i'm looking at i'm like garmin you're done tom mm-hmm. tom absolutely done. i this remember that is I, dead. same same right mm-hmm I mean, like being witness to that Mm -hmm. was super cool. It was Mm -hmm. fun in a way that I feel like today I don't get the same joy from from new features. Yeah. um, Because you've seen it all? No, I I think the new features are demonstrably less impactful. Mm. Like like the major the major problems 
have have been tackled long been solved and yeah. now they're they're like searching for more problems but yes. they're the little tiny ones right. here and there they, it's the it's the uh, the the stuff that writes a a document for you you know because you're going to be sick Dude, at your don't, don't at get your me job. started don't Look, get me started okay Please hold, don't. hold the thought hold the thought <laughs> we need to take a break okay and then i want to come back and talk about what is arguably kind of the current hotness uh, around you know new technology features ai i'm super curious to hear I what you have to say about that that's coming wait. up in a second all right so we're talking about kind of the way technology has evolved over time sometimes it's been really exciting with these new features maybe things have kind of plateaued and everything but i don't think big tech thinks that uh things have plateaued mm. because now this you know this handsome devil walks through the door called artificial intelligence it's been around for a while but mm. you know it went away for the summer and when it came back to school everybody was like oh well who are you? <laughs> oh, I'm AI. Oh, you're AI. Oh. And now big tech is real, really all about proving to you why, mm. you know, why it is the new hotness and yeah. everything. Do you like how do how do you feel about that from a kind of from from the standpoint of what we were talking about earlier? You know, these earlier devices when we were younger, they promised to deliver on certain things and mm -hmm. they did them well or they didn't, but there was some excitement around that. Do you find any, any sort of excitement around some of these AI features that you're seeing nowadays? Some, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as somebody with a, with a really busy inbox, mm -hmm. this notion of a virtual assistant who can like rifle through my inbox and be like, well, you got 88 emails this morning, like every Tuesday. Um, five of them are important. <laughs> totally. And here's, here's the rundown of those, right? You know what's funny about that, though? What? It's not very long. What was it? Five years ago, Google had Google Inbox. Yeah, true. And Inbox really did solve a lot of exactly what you're talking about. For yes. me, it did. And yeah, for a, a lot of people, it did. From an execution standpoint, it was super effective. And they just killed it. And, yep. you know, they're probably going to come back and resolve it again. But, probably. you know, some of these problems, like, they were they were solved before we had this catch-all terminology of artificial intelligence. Absolutely, right. And and yeah. so much of what's currently being sold under the banner of AI is is existing technology anyway. So I yeah, think that's, totally. that's kind of a problem. It's, it's a marketing and messaging problem where you have a, a lot of unrelated stuff being grouped together and being pushed under the same umbrella, which is, yeah. I have a problem with the messaging. Um, I also have a problem with AI. Like, it, it's weird. It feels like the companies have decided that things need to be sold as self-contained products almost. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get that demo that I absolutely hate. That, that, that like, you know, it's like, isn't it hard to express yourself? What if <laughs> instead of sending a text message, you told an AI to do it for you and it yeah. could build the text for you. And then when it gets it wrong, you'd be like, no, make me sound more excited. Yeah. Just write your own <laughs> freaking text message. Stop it. <laughs> so these, and, and uh, you know, I was glad though. We, we, we've started to see, cause I thought I was alone in this, but we've started to see mainstream people push back against this too. But well, we know, just saw this Google. with the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Google the, just had to, you know, it had that, that, that commercial. What is it? The, the kid wants to write a fan letter to an athlete. Yeah, to tell the to tell the athlete how much the kid appreciates and and idolizes this you know this per, this athlete. Right. Oh, just use Gemini for that. How no. inauthentic. Yeah. Yeah. No. How about wait? Why don't you teach like that's your child? The, that's the benefit of to that thing. Is yeah, to write it let's yourself. write this letter together. Yeah. And it'll be genuine and won't be a machine. That's by the way also like lowest common denominator in every yeah. everything because it can only predict what's been made before. Right. 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 So that's I hate that stuff. But when you take when you kind of deproductify AI and use it more as uh, an analogy, I I stumbled upon um, when doing another podcast I was doing a while back was was it would use it as kind of a seasoning to existing things. I think that's where the the real power and and promise mm -hmm. start to to become realized. Obviously, in photo photo editing stuff like that, that's a whole other like kind of kind of mess. parlor tricks yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's kind of playground stuff right but like you know introducing it to other things like uh you know evernote has a his new ai stuff that helps you file your notes a little bit better and stuff and you know half of it is half broken and doesn't really work right but it's like no that's what it should be it should be a seasoning it should be a um uh a modifier to something i already find useful mm -hmm. or something that's new enough that that it will be found useful in the future but this like this standalone stuff I don't know. I don't know that I will ever. I hope I'm wrong because I, I, I did like it when Siri and Google Assistant and Alexa sort of started this revolution of virtual assistants. Indeed. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Yeah. But now, you know, 
they were limited. But the worst thing that could happen is they could tell you, I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And the way a lot of these AI models work and LLMs work. They don't know that like, they don't know. I don't know <laughs> how, I don't, I don't actually know anything. So I'm just going to make up because I yeah. make up things out of whole cloth. That's, but that is what I do. That's what I'm designed to do. So yeah, their, their, glue, glue their purpose is to give you something really at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. And, uh, the, I don't know. I mean, occasionally they'll, they'll, you know, they'll work those in hard code, those, those, I don't know answers, but right. it has to be really intentional. And you're yeah. right. They, the, AI assistants that came before the Google Assistant, you know, I I've used those a lot, and I I think I appreciated knowing the limitations versus always getting an answer whether it's right or wrong. And I right. I don't know if that's a problem that that can be solved around AI. Like I'll be really curious to see if that's ever solved. Me too. And and you know I I, th I think that's really dangerous and i oh, try yeah, not to get sure. like breathless and stuff like that but i mean like i'm concerned about that because mm -hmm. we already live in an era where like a lot of people don't not only don't know how to fact check but like have no interest in fact checking right and this is perfect for them just give me yeah. my answer just give me the answer, I'm looking, the answer for. I'm looking for yeah you know what you didn't give me the answer i'm looking for let me ask you again yeah i'll ask you in a different way okay there yeah, it is there we go <laughs> nailed it so i think that's frustrating and i think it's yeah. i think it's sad that you know after having having gone through such a great decade and a half, two decades of like real features that are, that really make our lives better. Now, you know, these are being kind of sold to us as features that are just, just as revolutionary. And it's like, well, it's no. And also they're more dangerous or they're, they're less reliable. And I don't know. And it just seems um, cynical. It, it all seems like a bit of a cash grab to me. Yeah. I mean, there, it certainly is that. And at the same time, there are certainly some things that come along that I'm like, okay, you know, like, like, uh, at the time of this recording, we're at here for right, like a Google event, which right. by the time this plays, I think all the information is, is all out and, and everything anyways. But, um, you know, the whole idea of like a call summary for my brain, those are, those are features that are like actually useful for me because I can't tell you how many times I hang up the phone with someone and I'm like, damn, I wish I, like I tried <laughs> to did, take notes. What did we even talk about? But there's a lot in there that I was not able to keep up with. Yes. Like I would, I would love th that to be synthesized and. Agreed. So there's certain and things about the it. Voice but. recorder feature that mm -hmm. on, on, on phones now that lets you record thing and it gives you a transcript of the conversation and also a summary. Pretty cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's weird because like, but that's no, that's the point we were looking at earlier. The things that it does best and the things that are actually useful are just not as sexy. Yeah. You cannot get anyone to pay attention. You cannot blow anyone's skirt up by talking about summaries. Yeah, right. No, totally. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so totally. It's a seasoning. It's a or, or 20 or 30 different variations of summaries, you right. know, which sometimes these events feel like right now. Absolutely. It really does feel like 2024. All of the events, that's the cornerstone. Mm -hmm. That's the the peak. Uh, and, and, you know, that filters through everything that is announced from beginning to end is yeah. it all has to do with AI. Here's 30 examples of, of how we're doing it. Right. And, and also, I mean, and the photo stuff, you know, to a degree, like I we talked about camera phones a minute ago. Like I love I love taking photos. I'm not a photographer, but I love taking photos. Yeah. And we had a demo today. It was I think just you're a like, photographer. You're damn, well, damn good at taking thanks. photos. Thanks. Come right. But like, we have this great, <laughs> this great uh, example of a, of a kid in a field blowing a bubble. Yeah. And uh, well, you know, the horizon's not quite right. So let's fix that. I'm like, okay. You're not going to stop there, are you? No. <laughs> no. You know, he's just in a plain field. What if we added wildflowers? And what if we put a hot air balloon in the sky? I'm like, Cool. I guess, like, I guess, but that is the kind of thing that I think 10 years ago we would have spent oh. 30 seconds on in an app demo. It's mm -hmm. like, this is a cool app. Look at what these guys do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on. And now it's being presented as like, this is a cornerstone of our vision for the future of photography. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's making mm -hmm. shit up. Yeah. That's imagination. Yeah. Amount, right. Yeah. Machine driven imagination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Words to pictures. But it, but it makes sense, you know, to, to, to yeah. I don't have a better idea to give them credit. Like, and I know we're not supposed to, we, we, we've made it into a tech podcast. We, it's a, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it, it is that too, right? Yeah. It's, it's all these things. And really, I, th I think it's actually pretty apropos because it is the moment that we're living in right now. It yeah. seems is the excitement uh, du jour in technology is AI, whether that's manufactured, manufactured or not. Yeah. And I, I feel like more and more I talk to people about this. And you know, most people that I talk to seem to share your opinion as far as it feeling a little manufactured, feeling right. like it's something 
someone wants you to feel about the technology versus something that you actually do feel. Yes. Which when we were younger, you know, it was it just felt different. Maybe it felt different because we were younger and things were new and everything. But maybe there was that there excitement. There was there no because the changes were all because you hadn't major. seen it before. Yeah, and if it wasn't like if it wasn't a, a quantum leap in capability, well then the prices were still coming down. Yeah, or something. There was something legit to get it to to embrace. Yeah, but I, I, and and to be fair, like I I don't know where we go from here either because once we got to a point where I stopped doing camera comparisons in my reviews mm -hmm. i used to do that religiously I'm yeah like, here's you were this good. year's you were and very good at that yeah. compared to last year's and look at what's different and now yeah. we're at this point where there's so much processing that you take a photo and you can't you cannot qualitatively analyze it unless you're dxo mark and you're doing a bunch of lab stuff or, or somebody who does other lab stuff they're like, also good you, they're also good and they also vary from moment to moment yeah. Because there's a little oscillation of light or a shadow across the end. So the processing changes. And you, so there's no real meaningful change year over year. So if you're Google or whoever, what are you going to do? All right. Add balloons. Let, exactly. <laughs> Let's start making stuff up. If you're Samsung, like, yeah, use the S Pen to doodle a hot dog in the water. It's like, okay. Why? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, like I said, it's, it's, um, it's kind of a playground sort yeah. of stuff. And it should be fine. I don't know. I should be fine with it. I yeah. Think, I think maybe I would have been. I don't know. I don't know if I ever would have. Do you think you would have been more excited about it if you were younger? Like, are we cranky well, old men? Are we? Because I'm. I, I think am, there's a certain but. degree of of us being yeah cranky old men for sure. Yeah. Um. It's hard. It's hard not to be. It's, Time to hang it, it up. Seems to be the way of the world. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I I've told this story before, but I was in um my daughter's classroom last year, and I was helping out in the classroom, and they were they had their art lesson going on, and there was a, a the art teacher was in there, and she was giving the assignment. This is a fifth grade, fifth grade classroom. Okay. And um, she gives the assignment, and one of the boys in the classroom raises his hand, and he's like, can we use AI for this assignment? And it just really clicked to me that yeah. like, oh my goodness, like fifth graders are like actually actively thinking about how you use AI for certain things. Like that's Amazing that like our our kids are uh, technologically adept to even consider this as an option. Wild, but um, yeah. yeah, I think if I was young, I probably would would find it interesting, and I'd probably make bad things with it. You know, that's what it's kind no, of scares no me about AI. You Absolutely, know? yeah. And I'm glad there's. I a wouldn't focus have known any better. Yeah, you no, know? of course not. Right, you're doing stuff that you uh, that you want to do. You're a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well. Um, I know we have to kind of wrap things up here pretty soon. Um, one thing I like to ask um, everybody who comes on is, you know, we really cut our teeth in the world of technology. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our lives in tech have led us to this point to where we work in a professional realm, whatever we do in the world of tech. And you absolutely are there. Yeah. If technology didn't exist, what would uh, what would your thing be? What would what would you be if you weren't? the Michael Fisher of now, like, would, would you be a photographer? I could, which I guess is a certain type of technology, but I don't know. What's, no. what's another passion? No, I, you would live? I probably, I probably would have stayed acting because that's what I did acting, for a long time. Yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I know you and I have also done each done voice work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I did that for a long time and I studied acting. That's what my degree is in. Mm -hmm. And I, I really and it comes into play in your videos. I have to say, there's yeah. something very theatric about your videos. It's something I Thanks. highly respect about Thank the you. work you do. It's a certain level of quality. You're really good at telling a story Thanks. and writing a script and having there's your delivery is on <laughs> point. I mean, I really you. respect your production from that perspective. And I know it comes from your background in theater. It does. Yeah. And I used to. Thanks. I appreciate that. It definitely informs the, the style of video I, I do. Yeah. But I, I think the only, you know, I didn't necessarily want to stop acting. It just, that world will wear you down. Mm -hmm. And um, it started to feel like an abusive relationship. And I think the reason I was able to pivot to tech is first of all, look, if you had told me that I, that anyone would care what I had to say earlier, mm -hmm. I would have done it earlier, but I was convinced I was like, I would read all the greats in 2011. And uh, you know, I'd be like, I can't write like these cats. Like they're amazing. I can't do videos like these guys. Yeah. But, you know, I had, I had one of those years that everything went wrong. And uh, I was like, I lost my job, the voiceover job. And uh, I think the company got bought or whatever. And I said, I can't really pay my rent acting 
at this juncture in Boston where I was. And furthermore, what does this profession ever do to me except depress me and, and fill me with anguish? Mm. I had just done a string of shows that I had a lot of um, passion for, and it was a very ambitious idea. Mm. I was working with some of the best actors in my city whom I respected for a director I deeply respected, and it, it collapsed. It just didn't work. And that happened like too many times in a row. And when I started dabbling in, in gadget blogging, I was like uh, going to Germany to cover trade shows. And I was making videos for an audience that like, it turns out cared what I had to say. Mm -hmm. And I was getting paid a fair wage and I was getting paid more than a fair wage. And I was like, this world is giving me everything I wanted the acting world to give me. Mm. But it's only because I had that alternative that I felt like I could leave because the performance, the actual work of acting, the, the craft, Oh my God, I I love it. I, mm -hmm. I adore it, and I still miss it. But it was a it was a comparison I just couldn't ignore. It was just yeah. like, well, over here, uh, I'm very fulfilled and uh, very comfortable, and over here, I'm fulfilled twice a year, and I'm very uncomfortable. So I think were it not for that juxtaposition, mm -hmm. I would still be just doing what I could do to 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 make a, a performance career in my life. Yeah, for for potentially for better or for worse yeah hey you know yeah, yeah right in that alternate universe who knows if, yeah if i was successful then cool well, could you ever see yourself going back to that i thought about that recently i, I would it, it would be fun mm. it would be really fun but i did go out on a high note <laughs> totally you know there was one yes. show I, I came back one last time i was like i'm coming back to see if this works yeah and we did a great show and you know long story short it was it was so successful that um I was like, well, either this has to bring me back into the fold or I have to say, that's it. That's it. Going out while I'm, while I'm on yeah. the top. Yeah. And that was 2015. Yeah. And I still, I was just building, starting to build Mr. Mobile at that point. So yeah. it needed to, had to make a choice. Yeah. Do not regret the choice I made, but yeah, the nice rest to go is back. history. Yeah. Mr. Mobile is a force as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> For as long as he lasts. Yeah, I we'll hear see. you. I hear you. you know? Well, I adore you. Um, Thanks, I think you, the work that you do is, is at the, at the top quality of tech reviewers uh that i follow and thank you um yeah definitely a, a model that i that i look at closely in the work that i do and you're just a hell of a guy i appreciate you uh thank talking you. about yourself a little bit today i appreciate you inviting me to talk about myself <laughs> I, I try not to uh i try not to feed any narcissistic impulses vulnerable or otherwise that's okay you're welcome to that's why i invited you here <laughs> no, and i'm a, i'm I, I will always sit down like I've, I've been a big fan of yours for a very long time so oh, I'm, I'm very happy to, that you're doing this and uh thanks. and doing it well thanks. this is the kind of stuff that i don't have the like i can't find the resolve to do oh, anymore you can i'm like do it. you want to record this on my can. pixel fold yeah <laughs> it's a little bit of yeah extra work but it, it ends up being worth it's it it's great yeah. yeah yeah so congratulations and i, I look All forward right. to listening to more thank you michael thank you, always man. a pleasure and uh, i hope to see you at the next mbg Woo. sounds good to me <laughs> cheers, cheers buddy <laughs> Huge thank you to my guest, Michael Fisher. It was so much fun hanging out. And I uh, just want to let you know real quick, we've got a Patreon. If you want to support this show and support everything that we're doing, you know, I'm trying to kind of reach out to people and and actually be in physical space uh, for these interviews. I just find there's so much more rewarding um, when we do it in person. And, you know, that requires more resources. So patreon.com slash Jason Howell. That's the Patreon for this show and everything that I'm doing with the Textbloader YouTube channel, ad-free shows, early access to videos, Discord community, an exclusive patrons-only pre-show live stream every week before the Textbloader podcast airs, and so much more. We also offer the chance to be an executive producer of this show, just like this week's executive producers, and there's four of them, Bill Rudder, Jeffrey Maricini, John Cuny, and Taylor Sunderhaas. Each of them is getting an, a, a, a t-shirt uh, with Textbloader on it, and you can do the same if you support at that level, patreon.com slash Jason. Howell. Now, I produce this show every week. Every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern is when it premieres on the Textbloater YouTube channel, whether I'm doing it live at that time or premiering a pre recorded interview, as is the case this week. The audio podcast publishes to the feeds 
uh, pretty soon after that. So you can really just find everything you need to know at the website, techsploder.com. That's got the video, that's got the audio, all the ways to subscribe. I have a new portion of the page dedicated to my ethics and uh, kind of my promises there. So check it out, techsploder.com. Thanks again to our guest, Michael Fisher. Thanks to you for watching and listening. And uh, we'll see you next week on another episode of the Techsploder podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye.